Welcome Chuck. In this video I'll be showing you how to use Adobe's CS6 Premiere Pro to turn pictures into a stop motion or a time lapse. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started by looking at those files. Let's look at those pictures. It doesn't really matter where you start this process. Um, whether you use Aperture, iPhoto, whatever, as long as you know where your pictures are. Uh, I just want to talk about the format of those pictures, the size of the pictures. Um, so first off, recommend using JPEG for this process. File size, it doesn't really matter as long as your dimensions are uh, big enough to get a thousand pixels high. Make sure that you can fill up a TV from the top to the bottom, 1,080 pixels. So I shot these um, fairly small pictures because I knew I was going to be doing stop motion with them. Um, outputted them out to be this size right here. That'll give me some room. Um, one thing I like about this file size is I'm pretty much um, able to future-proof this project for 4K. That might take a couple years to come out, maybe five years or so. Um, already, I'm already ready for 2K when that resolution becomes a standard format for televisions. Uh, also in the project, if I ever wanted to, I could easily pan in while the shot is uh, being taken, whether that's like a Ken Burns effect, or if in an individual picture or lots of pictures I wanted to crop those out, I could because I have extra pixels available to myself. Okay, so that's the size. You want to just make sure that you have enough to uh, be a thousand pixels tall. So now that you see where they are, make sure you know where they are, and um, make sure also that your pictures are a good brightness value. They're all basically exposed pretty good. Um, if you haven't done that, if uh, they don't look all bright and looking good, they don't have to look perfect because they're just going to be going through a stop motion effect. Um, then you probably want to go into whatever your photo editing program is. You probably don't want to do that straight in Premiere Pro. Get that done ahead of time, whether it's iPhoto. Output them into a folder. Um, uh, one option you have if you're using Photoshop is put them all on a layer in Photoshop. Do all your editing and you can input that Photoshop project into Premiere Pro and then you can make changes in the Photoshop project and they'll show up magically in Premiere Pro. But if you don't want to use that workflow, you just want to use files sitting somewhere and putting them in your project and you want to make sure that you have that exposure the way you like them before you start. Plus it makes it a lot faster. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to open up Premiere Pro. You don't need to worry too much about the settings that you're going to see at the beginning. Um, just make sure you give it a title that you're going to be able to find later on. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. Um, this first intro part doesn't matter other than making the title. Um, so I'm going to call this Family Stop Motion. It's something I've been planning for a while. So I'm going to show you from the beginning on how to make it. So let's go ahead and hit OK. This next one is important. Normally it doesn't matter that much when you import your first movie. The settings will all be taken care of for you, but because you're only importing pictures, uh, you want to make sure you get this right from the beginning. Um, I use this setting right here. Um, 1080, progressive scan, 24 frames per second. The sequence name isn't really that big of a deal. If it makes you feel better, um, give it some kind of name. Doesn't really matter. Won't, won't show up. I'm only going to have one sequence for this project. So I like this setting right here. So let's open her up. First of all, it's a new interface for, if it's a new interface for you, just walk you through it real quick. Um, 
This is where you find your pictures. There's some other things you can do later on with it, but in this box right here, um, when you want to import them into your Premiere Pro project, they're going to show up in this pane right here. And when you want to import them into your sequence, they're going to show up right here. This is where you're going to do all your moving around stuff. And when you want to look at something, you're, it's going to show up up right here. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first interface thing to talk about is the tilde key that will zoom you into whatever pane you're looking at. So I hit the tilde key and I'm zoomed in. And now I want to uh, just want to open up my desktop. Okay, there's my desktop there. I see that um, I have my stop motion folder right here. Uh, I'm going to start, come here. When you open this up, um, you're going to be in a thumbnail view. I don't like the thumbnail view. I have a really fast computer, and it still is just uh, not very efficient. Every time it goes to reload a thumbnail, it pops to the top of the screen. don't really like it. Um, we're going to be doing all these pictures anyway, so just go ahead and switch views down here. Grab the first one, go down. I'm just going to do a few of these. Um, I'm not going to do all of them, just to kind of show you. Hit shift, click again, and you got a whole lot of pictures. There's a lot of ways to get them in there. Easiest way, right click, import. Okay, now it's importing all those pictures in. Let me go over some useful things when you're doing video editing, picture editing on your computer. One useful app to have uh, available to you, don't even have to download it, it comes right with your Mac, is Activity Monitor. Um, just go to Spotlight over here, type in Activity, get this puppy to pop up. Um, I like to keep her so I can see the processing that's going on. So uh, you can go to the dock icon and show CPU usage. And then you'll always have this little bar down here that shows you how your CPUs are doing. Uh, I was just curious why it was running so slow. So I popped it open. Just wanted to make sure that whatever I was doing, else I was doing, I have Aperture open just because I'm working on something. I got Safari uploading to the internet. Just wanted to prove to myself that it was this uh, Adobe project that was causing it to run so smooth, so slow. So I got one processor doing that. And I got one uh, you can see making this movie right now. Okay, let's see uh, how far we've gotten. You can actually close this and you'll still have that percentage. You'll still have that activity right there. Okay, you can see that the import is done. Uh, you want to get back out of this window. Remember, it's the tilde key that got you in here. So the tilde key will come back out. And you can see that all of those pictures are right up here. Okay, so this is the window that finds your media. This is the window that gets it into the project. And you can see all the thumbnails right here. One thing to note that they all say 150 right now. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about that for a second. The frames per second of this movie that we're going to make is already set at 24 frames per second. This 150 is the number of frames that this picture will show up if I was to bring it into my movie. So that's obviously not going to work. That would mean that that would show up for multiple seconds, which is not what we want for the stop motion effect. The person who I got this concept from said that she uses 12 frames per second. I think that came out a little fast for my blood. So um, I have my settings set up so that it ends up being 6 frames per second. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. But what does that mean? Well, do a little bit of math, and you'll find out that you want your pictures, if you're using a 24 frames per second movie, 
you want your pictures to all be set to four frames per second. Now, how do we do that? Let me show you. Let's select all of our pictures. Um, let's see. Select all. Now, right click on these guys, and you can do the speed duration right here. Uh, and I'm just going to set them all to four. That simple. Doing it up here is way easier than once you get it down into the sequence. It's still something you can do. Uh, it's just way easier to do that. So let me drag these guys down. You don't have to do them all at once. I'll just do a few, show you what that looks like. the first 10 we just uh, put them right down in there right at the beginning sounds good to me okay couldn't really see anything that happened let's uh let's talk about this for a second so this is your sequence um and basically moving around here use the plus and minus keys to zoom in Zooming in, zooming out. You can also use your trackpad on your Mac. Um, it's kind of too moves too fast for me. I like to use plus or minus. And you got this guy right here, zooming out, zooming in, and it also allows you to go through the timeline like that. Um, now, what is this thing up here? Why can't we see anything? That's because I accidentally put these not right at the very beginning. And this is where we're looking, this slider right here. So we're not looking at anything right now. And there we go. There's my beautiful mug. You can see the pictures coming along. So um, look at that. So this is where we, where are you looking right now? Another way to move that around is by clicking up here in this gray area, right here. Uh, clicking here doesn't do it. Clicking here doesn't do it. Clicking right there does. Um, another great way to move around is put your fingers up on JKL. Uh, L will go forward, K will stop you, J will go backwards. So move around like that for a little bit. J backwards, K stops, L goes forward. Um, now if you hold down K and hit the L button, it'll move you forward one frame at a time. So you can see one, two, three, four, one, two. So you can see us moving through our movie, uh, scrubbing through you know, exactly how you want. Most of the interface in this portion is um, pretty obvious. I wanted those over here. So I just made a box, bottom, left click, um, drag them, dragging them over. I have this magnetic snap on, which will start. Um, like that just by default so that's good helps it just move around a little easier so things are looking kind of weird we'll fix those fix that in a little bit let me get the rest of these pictures in here uh, I'll bring my song in and then we'll fix this um, fact that it's too far zoomed in okay so I'm back up here I'm gonna select the rest of my pictures I could hold down this whole way or I could just go to the bottom uh, hold that shift button left click I got the rest of my pictures you bring them in right where I want them okay there you go we're all in let's just see how that looks hit the L button K stop or space um, but I wouldn't recommend using space it's just easier to always be using the same thing JKL you'll be able to use the I and O buttons later on, which are right above your hands. Not for this project, but later on once you're using uh, this a little bit more. So as you already see, it's pretty fun going on. Looks like I was too zoomed in, but you know what? That's because uh, we need to change something. Let's fix something up here. Okay, so let's zoom out. Hit the minus button. Let's get all these pictures. And then let's scale those to frame size. So the problem is that these are uh, about 2,000 pixels tall and about 4,000 pictures wide. As you remember, 
were set up for 1080 tall and I think it's 2300 wide so these there's too many pixels for this not to not to worry we'll just scale those to frame size those pixels are still there so if you ever needed to zoom in you're not you haven't lost them um, but now it'll you know looks a lot better okay so now we have something that kind of looks like a stop motion you see it coming through pretty cool um, but let's get some music because it's kind of boring so it's as easy as literally dragging a song in I'm going to go over to iTunes uh, I have this song I got it from uh, FMA just a uh, free Creative Commons song that I could actually post and uh, not have to worry about copyright infringement or anything uh, let's bring it over here um, if you want this bar to go away while you're there's a common Mac thing come over here it'll turn gray for a second click and then this will be kind of zoomed out a little bit come over here it'll click and you can show that it can't go in there can't go in there can't go in there I could drop it right there uh, I'm gonna put it right here just so I know where kind of know where it is myself now that it's up here now I'm gonna drag it down here goes into the audio won't go into the video obviously just drag right to the audio now this is a good example because this song is a little bit silly because it starts off with somebody talking so I'm going to hit the tilde key zoom into this sequence um, I want to mess with this thing so I'm going to drop down do a little claps I want to zoom in a little bit better just so I can show you what I'm doing so easy to use interface pretty intuitive drag this guy down uh, so now I can see a lot better. This is just the left and the right going on here. And if you hear this, let's listen to that. So you can hear she's talking right there. Um, I know that she gets done talking right over here. So I want mine to start, you know, right about there. So all I got to do is make sure my keyframes are off and drag this guy over it's just cutting it off and now I can drag this over here okay so now function um, left arrow gets you right to the beginning so let's listen to that you the L key Okay, does that start a little too loud for you? It starts a little too loud for me. So I'm going to show you a wonderful feature called keyframes. You uh, hit that, get your one keyframe over there. Let's get one at the beginning. Again, function left arrow right at the beginning. It's at a keyframe in there. This yellow line right here is a representation of my volume starting um, I want it to start lower so now listen to this so it's going to start low come up to a normal volume pretty cool huh um, you can even make that a more rounded corner if you want to get crazy with that one thing you want to watch for, let's zoom back out, hit the tilde button, is this song I notice is a little bit loud. The whole track is a little bit loud. So I'm just going to uh, function, right mouse button, go to the end of the track, add a keyframe in. So now I got one at the near the beginning, one at the end. Function, left mouse button, get me back to the uh, beginning of this track I'm going to hit play and I want you to watch the volume of the left and the right track uh, thumb roll I was taught is you want it to be anywhere between negative 8 negative 6 depending on whether it's you know a broadcast or whether it's just a movie you're making 
a um, little bit louder for TV, a little bit quieter for a movie. So let's watch that and see how we're doing. So you can see that it kind of stays up or around. Uh, so it bled over right there. It's a little bit too loud. So I'm going to pause that guy. Now I can drag this down. Just a smidge. Let's see how we're doing. Still a little loud. So let's bring that down just a little bit more. Let's see how we did. So that looks good. It's getting up to be about four, six or so. Maybe a little loud, but. <laughs> That's a good picture. All right, a little bit lower. Okay, this is the kind of stuff you don't really have to worry about, but um, some of the tweaking you can if you want to. Okay, so we got our audio the way we like it. So now the fun part 